Hello. This video will go through the key mathematical concepts of short run production. Let's start with the production function. The firm's output Q equals K times L plus 6L squared minus one third L to the third power. So Q is the quantity of the firm's output. K represents units of capital. L represents units of labor. Because this is a short run problem, K is going to be fixed at some value. So let's let K equal 45. So the firm is stuck with 45 units of capital in the short run. Substituting in 45 for K, our short run production function will be given as follows. So this is our short run production function. Sometimes it's referred to as the total product of labor. The total product of labor or short run production function will just give you the quantity of output from any given, la any given level of the labor usage. So one of the key things that we're going to get from this short run production function is something called the average product of labor. I'll just abbreviate here. Average product of labor. This is output per worker. This equals output per worker. And average product of labor mathematically is just the total product function the short run production function divided by L. There is no derivatives involved in getting the average product of labor function. Just taking Q, the production function, and dividing it by units of labor. So dividing through by L, we're going to get just 45 plus 6L minus 1 third L squared. One of the things that we may be interested in is finding where output per worker is maximized. So let's find where we can maximize output per worker. Now this will involve taking a derivative, so this is a maximization problem. To find where average product of labor is maximized, we're going to take the derivative of the average product of labor function that we just solved for with respect to labor. So taking the derivative of this result here that I'm circling with respect to labor, we're going to get 6 minus 2 thirds L and since this is a maximization problem, we're going to set the derivative equal to zero, and now we're going to solve for L. And we'll get, well, two-thirds L equals six, or L equals six times three divided by two, or nine. So output per worker is maximized at nine units of labor. Another thing I should mention here before we go on is that when output per worker is maximized it is also going to be true that the marginal product of labor which we haven't talked about or defined yet will equal the average product of labor. Okay so when L equals 9 it's also true that the marginal product of labor will equal the average product of labor. So that's something that you should keep in the back of your mind. Okay, let's move on to the marginal product of labor. The marginal product of labor 
is going to tell us how much output will change when we hire one more worker. This is a derivative concept. We're going to take the derivative of the short run production function, the total product function with respect to labor. So looking up here now, I'm going to take the derivative of the production function with respect to labor. We're going to get 45 plus 12 L minus L squared. So that is the marginal product of labor. A few things that we can do with the marginal product of labor is we can find where output is maximized. So let's find where output is maximized. To do that, we're going to set marginal product of labor equal to zero. Okay, and then we're going to just solve for L. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to multiply through by minus one. It'll be easier for me to uh, factor. Okay, or just think of moving everything over to the right hand side. You'll be left with, oops, that should be uh, minus there, sorry, minus 45 minus 12L plus L squared. So this is going to factor nicely for us. It's going to be L plus 3 in parentheses multiplied by L minus 15. And this equals 0. So marginal product of labor will be 0 at L equals minus 3, which is a meaningless result in economics, thinking of minus 3 workers doesn't make any sense, so we can ignore that. If L happened to be 15, then marginal product will be zero, and that's the more interesting answer. So when this firm hires 15 workers, marginal product is zero, and that's when the firm is maximizing its output. If you wanted to, you could plug 15 back into the production function here, put in 15 for L, um, 15 squared, and then 15 cubed, and you'll find that this firm would be producing 900 units of output with 15 workers. There's no other level of labor that will give this firm more output than 900 units, given that capital is fixed in the short run at 45. So that's uh, something that you should be able to do. Um, another thing that we can do with the marginal product of labor result, uh, involves something called the diminishing marginal returns. This is the idea that in the short run, as a firm hires more and more workers, eventually the additions to output will become smaller and smaller. In other words, the marginal product will begin to decline at some point. Let's find where that point is. To do this, we're going to take the derivative of the marginal product of labor function with respect to labor. Set that derivative equal to zero and solve for L. And you get L equals six. This tells us something about when diminishing returns are going to set in. Diminishing returns will set in for this firm after they hire more than six workers. Okay, the marginal product will be negatively sloped after this firm hires more than six workers. That is indicative of diminishing marginal returns. Let me put a little graph here together to sum up what we just found. Our marginal product function is going to look something like that. We found a couple interesting points. We found that when marginal product is uh, at a maximum, that's at six workers. And this means that, well, diminishing returns are going to set in after we hire uh, more than six workers. Marginal product begins to decline. It has a negative slope. 
So diminishing returns is setting in uh, after six workers. And then the other thing we found is that marginal product is zero at 15 workers right over here. That's when output is maximized. And as we found, output is maximized uh, at a quantity of 900. The other thing we found here was the average product of labor went something like this. It reached a maximum and then it fell. And this maximum point occurred at nine units of labor, where we f found that nine up here. Okay. So that's a little bit about uh, short run production. I hope you found this helpful.